wrestling, and I don't know the extent to which this program's audience overlaps with a wrestling audience. I haven't really done a study of that. But in the world of wrestling, there is something called a heel. And a heel in wrestling is a guy who just ticks off the audience, just rubs them the wrong way, goads them, everything else. And in Appalachian wrestling, in, in, in some of the circuits in the South, Virginia and so on, who would make a better heel than a liberal? Uh, our next guest wrestles under the name of Dan Richards or Daniel Richards or, as he's better known, the progressive liberal. His real name is Daniel Harnsberger. He lives in Virginia, but as the progressive liberal, he infuriates uh, wrestling audiences uh, around uh, a much broader geographic region. So first of all, Dan, thanks for coming on the program. Hey, thanks for having me. Great to talk to a fellow liberal. Well, you know, I might be a little further to the left of that, actually, but, uh, uh, <laughs> um, and, and it's great to talk to somebody who, who puts his physical safety where his mouth is. Um, now, uh, I think there are a couple things we could probably uh, inform our audience of uh, right away. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb here and say that most of the wrestling audiences you appear before are not heavily packed with, uh, with sensitive liberals. Um, in Appalachia, definitely in the South, without question. But wrestling audiences uh, uh, can surprise us sometimes, like uh, I was in New York, for example, where I was overwhelming. Everyone thought I'd be overwhelmingly cheered, um, and then that didn't wasn't the case. But then take like a couple weekends ago, I was in Arkansas, um, and I was I had a mixed reaction there, where you know we thought I'd be overwhelmingly booed. So uh, they never cease to amaze me. But yeah, pretty consistently in the South, I'm. Uh, I'm pretty uh hated well <laughs> you know uh it, it, it's interesting because uh you know we were talking earlier i worked for bernie sanders during his presidential campaign there he had a lot of hardcore support uh in in, in appalachia we talked to a lot of folks who you know had been you know he did very well in west virginia he did very well among communities that that a lot of people think of as quote unquote conservative or what have you. Um, so I'm, I guess I'm not completely surprised, but uh, now, now you're a heel, right? I mean, you're supposed to tick the audience off. Is that right? Yeah, well, I mean, the good thing about my character or myself really um, is, I mean, I just go out, I can say the same thing in one place and it it gets the same reaction, or it gets a very it might get a very different reaction as opposed to I say the exact same thing somewhere else. Uh, but that's just to me a uh, a very good example of how polarized the country is when it comes to politics. Well, now one of the articles I read about you said that you got the idea to do this uh, after um, after I'm trying to remember. Uh, I'm trying to find it now, but I think you said something real negative about, uh, I hope Trump builds the wall to keep you people in so you can't uh, disrupt the rest of the country or something like that. You got booed for it. Was yeah. that how all this started? Well, the idea preceded that, but that that uh, particular example, I was in a small, t a very, very uh, small unincorporated town in uh, West Virginia, and I said, this Trump had been a candidate, I guess, for six months at this point. I said, I hope he builds a wall around this town instead of, you know, around Mexico, so you people can't infiltrate the population. But I had, uh, can, I had decided to bring that part of myself into wrestling a, a year before, but it was that was me testing the waters at that time, and that's that's when I knew I had, I had something. So. Um, yeah, so, I'll bet. And, and, you know, we're talking to the, the wrestler known as a progressive liberal, Dan Richards. And, uh, you know, you're saying, you know, this is basically you, right? I mean, this is what you 
these are your political opinions, certainly, but, but it, for our audience, for our listeners who don't know, you win when they boo you, right? I mean, they have fun booing you, and uh, by and large, I would imagine, and, uh, and that's, that's how you're, if you get a reaction, what, even if the reaction is really negative, you're doing your job, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. I, I mean, the job is to, you want people to be invested in you emotionally one way or another. So, and that's often the case. I do want to say something, though, about uh, wrestling audience as a whole. Like, uh, when I was on uh, the Tucker Carlson show um, back in, I guess it was late July, and he he felt like every, you know, every wrestling audience is uh was, you know, anti-liberal. And I just, I don't think that's the case. Uh, wrestling wrestling fans are, are no different than anyone else. So I think they're, they're as diverse as, and, and polarized politically as the rest of the country. But I think because wrestling is so tied to uh, Southern culture, people think that, it, you know, think that to be the case. Like, that, I'd just be booed by all wrestling audiences at large. But there's independent wrestling in, in California and the United Kingdom and in Texas and Washington State and Denver, Colorado, and, you know, plenty of liberal places where I, I would be cheered if I was to come out in any, any of those venues. Yeah, I know. I think it's a great point. I mean, look, my son-in-law, Cody, is from New Jersey. He's a huge wrestling fan. I know uh, a lot of people, uh, I, but I know that you also work a lot of uh, uh, the Southern venues. So uh, that's, that's part of your act. But, uh, and I have to say, uh, and again, we're talking with Dan Richards, the progressive liberal, the wrestler. Uh, you come out, you know, wrestlers have outfits, they have costumes. You have one with pictures of Hillary Clinton all over your shirt. And I got to say that I think that on the Democratic side of the ledger, that shirt is very funny, whether you're a Bernie supporter or a Hillary supporter. It's still, I, I get a big kick out of that shirt. I just want you to know that. So. Oh, yeah. Well, it's the most outlandish thing I could possibly find. So <laughs> I, um, I, I couldn't wait to put, I can't wait to put it on every night. Um, it's, it's something where if, I'm wrestling in front of an audience that uh, has not seen me before. They're, they're going to quickly know what I'm all about. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and I know that you're, you're willing to take on uh, anybody if you have to, but uh, you've said, and I want to ask you about this, Dan, because I, I, I'm really curious about this. You've said that these are your, you know, essentially your views. Maybe you make state them in a little bit more abrasive way to, to get a reaction out of people. But does it ever get you down to kind of state your political point of view and get booed when you do get booed? Does it ever just like get to be a drag? Well, no, because I, I anticipate it. I think it overall it's sad if I'm saying, hey, I want you guys to go to clean energy. And, uh, and people are like, boo. It's <laughs> just the, if, if you really broke it down, like some of the things I say that, you know, people still boo and the, the southern audiences it's just it's mind-blowing but then for them to to cheer a guy like trump who in no way embodies anything that they say they're about um i i don't know how anyone could call themselves a christian and, and i'm not a religious person um and i'm not i'm not uh well i'm not a judgmental person either but i am judging you. they I don't see how you can say you are a, a supporter, a follower of Christ, and then follow Donald Trump at the same time. Well, that seems pretty irrefutable to me. Um, so, well, let me flip it around. I, I was wondering, you know, thinking about what you're doing, even though they boo you when you say these things is clean energy or whatever, and uh, I agree with you, by the way. I mean, I don't think you could be a follower of Jesus and and follow a guy who wants to throw all, a lot more people into poverty and let mothers starve and all that business. But um, do, you, do you ever think, well, maybe even though they're booing, you're kind of planting these ideas in their heads and maybe they'll sit there for a couple of years and 
and someday they'll start to think about it. No, I think they're if they're going to come to that conclusion, it's going to be on their own. But I think, I think especially now where the media is by, you know, from Donald Trump and and then pundits at at Fox News and and Trump's team, you know, cronies. They're 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 planting seeds that are are going to be probably more influential than mine. I hate to say, um, where they're first demonizing the media as uh, just instead of being objective and, and reporting the news like they do, that they're demonizing as uh, diehard liberals, and then in turn liberals are demonized at, as anti-religious, anti-everything uh, uh, Southern culture, and, and thus you have this in, embedded hatred for liberals that, that goes across the South that – and I don't know what – if if the Bush years didn't teach people that Republican economics don't work and then what would inevitably happen – with this, the passing of this tax plan and everything else the Republicans are, are doing behind the scenes while we're distracted by the latest tweet or the latest uh, mouth diarrhea by Donald Trump. Um, if that doesn't sway them the other way, at least from the standpoint of their own pocketbooks, and then if they really objectively look at things from a morality standpoint, which that's why sometimes they say they vote for Republicans is because it's not because uh, so they might think, well, Democrats, the economy does better when Democrats are in office. But you know, from a moral standpoint, uh, I'm voting Republican, but I don't see where their morals are, are greater. And in fact, much the opposite. So if, if all of that evidence is staring them dead in the face, I don't know that my words, especially where I'm, aiming to jeer them and, and, and rile them up, which, by the way, they make it very easy. I don't think that that's going to have any more pull than we would maybe like it to. And on top of that, they're, they're coming to forget about their problems. Yeah. I think that's why I get such an adverse reaction. They're coming to be entertained. And, you know, <laughs> I'm kind of uh, – I'm speaking about – some taboo subjects, uh, namely politics. So uh, that that creates a very. That's why I'm very sensitive to them. Yeah. No, I I, I understand. And, but you know, it's interesting. You know, you raise a great point. I know a lot of people who feel that way. That that you know, look, if they were going to figure it out, if they couldn't figure it out when a moron like Trump was running, then they're never going to figure it out. But I'll tell you, I do know that Bernie, for example, thinks differently. He feels he 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 he. He could reach some of those people, not all of them, but there's a whole whole bunch that are hardcore that you'll never change. But, you know, that he, he could get to enough of them that along with well, the, the people that got discouraged and stayed home in Michigan and wherever, that that might have made a difference. And I, I kind of go with that, too. Well, what I love about Bernie is he, first of all, he goes to those uh, communities. He went to Welch, West Virginia. Um, places like that, you know, McDowell County, which is right. the, I think, the poorest county in the country. Yep. Um, I, I have friends. I have friends from there. I went to college in Southern West Virginia, so I'm very familiar with the area. Um, first of all, he went there. Number one, uh, that's more than most candidates can say. Second of all, he has a he he does he explains things in a way that. It's not adver it's not adversarial. It's that really anyone objectively can listen to, understand, and you know if he's not going to change every mind, which I'm sure he's aware of, but he does it in a way that I think is textbook. That he'll so if he's talking about healthcare, for example, I've watched him do this. Um, you know, he'll he'll explain the policy what you know what it does versus and they'll contrast it with a republican plan and he doesn't he doesn't do it in a um you know way like maybe the progressive liberal would 
So you just say, say them very objective facts. And of course, um, with, with Trump out there, the facts are, are very distorted nowadays um, and Fox News as well. But he, I think he far and away has the most effective strategy of any politician I've ever seen, um, it, even more so than, than Bill Clinton, who I think, you know, is a very effective speaker as well. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a great point, and I think that comes out of, uh, out of respect, that, uh, you know, he basically respects people until they give him a reason not to. And, you know, he said, do you realize, I remember when he went to McDowell County, you know, I helped him with that. The, you know, do you know, realize that if you drive up the road a few hours, life expectancy is almost 20 years longer? You know, is that right? right. You know, it's the, you, you and I can both understand it's wrong that just by being born in this county, you're likely to die 18 years sooner. You know, that kind of thing. That's what he was really good at. So, so I hope as you go around there and, you know, I know one guy can't change the world, but uh, I hope you have a little bit of optimism as they're throwing, you know, uh, their programs at you or whatever, that uh, it may not always be this way. So uh, before I let you go, Dan Richards, where can people learn more about the, the wrestler known as the progressive liberal? Well, to all my liberals out there who may be stuck in these you know, rural areas where they're afraid to speak their mind because they'll get chastised by, by those around them, whether it be family, friends, or community, for uh, having the audacity to have objective liberal views, uh, they can follow me at um, on Facebook at PL as in Progressive Liberal Daniel Richards. That's Facebook at PL Daniel Richards, and then also on Twitter, uh, my handle is at Progress Lib eight zero four. Um, so you can see, not only see my upcoming appearances, but also uh, you know I, I post on the regular and. Uh, some things I think would uh, be encouraging to, or, 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 and certainly agreeable to my fellow liberals. All right. Well, we'll encourage people to do that. And uh, Daniel Richards, also known as a progressive liberal, uh, thanks for coming on the program. Thanks for having me, RJ. You bet. And we will be right back after this. I am Richard R.J. Eskow, and this is The Zero Hour.